everyone, welcome to another episode on Angela Bettina Presents. Now I have a special guest from Germany. She's an actress, producer, and writer for Awesome Mindfulness Coach. Her name is Lisa Richner. Let's learn more about her, all right. All right, first, thank you, you Lisa. Yes, yes. Well, thank you so much for being my show again. You know, you're always welcome uh, in my podcast, in my radio show, in Radio Illuminati. So fantastic. And I just found that you are being involved in several projects that we will be discussing in this interview and to keep the, the fans and followers update about your what you're doing. And that's fantastic. So I saw that um, the less a crux do merit, it sounds like a... Uh, difficult for me to pronounce. It's a short film directed by Lorenzo Gandolfo, and you play the role Luis. How, how can you tell us about that? How how, how you doing on that? Mm -hmm. it? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a French film, and it's about actually it's really really funny. It's about married scammers. So it's about a couple that mm -hmm. goes to us. I'm playing Luisa a very rich couple that they like to hang out with French people, you know, speak some French and actually take their money and promise them to organize their wedding in France and must say for them, you know, but never, they will never do it. And um, because they're kind of friends, they believe them and uh, Louisa and her husband, they have a lot to do. So um, they say, yes, of yes, help us, please. You are our friends. And they are like, amazing, give us the credit card, you know? <laughs> That's good. So, yeah. And, yeah, and you did that, you play that main role. No, did you play one of the main roles of that one or the main role for that feature film? I, I played the uh, main role for that. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, and short film. I say feature, feature film. film, short film, yes. This was a short film, yeah. And I wanted to make something funny. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make something in, in, in French. So that was interesting for me. And my character, Louisa, really has this like, german french accent you know it's not oh. like you wouldn't think she's mother tongue she's speaking like um like a german person that's good that's good so in other words so the short film was in french language or just the accent it french, it french. oh french. that's good so yeah. you speak your native language uh german you speak french and also in english yeah and what and other now language? i'm learning hmm? i'm learning danish as well Danish wow. to Denmark yeah 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 so it's going to be my fourth language I'm going to have courses uh, twice a week fantastic so that means for any any director is watching this um podcast that your multi-language task I see multi-language is not easy <laughs> <laughs> no it's not yes. and I'm definitely used to study a lot but it's as an actress it's so beneficial to speak a lot of languages exactly like, mm -hmm. um, the more you speak, the better, because that's all the markets you can work in, the U.S., the U.K., Spanish, Italian. It's, exactly. it's really beneficial to speak a lot of languages. I even remember that I um, read an interview with, with it. Um, she has like a lot of um, a lot of heritages, but she said like she speaks seven languages and it was actually her her path to her acting career because she could in so many countries at the same time like present herself and, and be there and say like hey I can play in a movie I can do a commercial I can do whatever exactly the no no it, yes and in, 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 uh, as long as if you're able to speak at least two languages it's more easy to learn the third one and the fourth one and yes yes it's yes. more convenient but it's still it's very challenging it's very hard I can imagine but I also want to like um, just calm down the people that think, oh, I don't speak more than one or two languages. That's also fine because there are many actors also out there that have a career in one country and that's how they start. And then you can still learn another language or learn English um, if you want. So I also um, say to my clients, when I came here to Denmark, I didn't speak any Danish. And then I had a TV role, like as a supporting role. Um, in for, for an American agent. So then it was like, okay, amazing. And everyone everyone here in Denmark told me, no, you're not going to get any TV things as long as you don't speak Danish. And I just went in and really trusted and really wanted. And that's the first thing that happened. 
So, yeah, and and I have to tell you that because these things are really motivating for me and also really nice, you know, when I have like clients over for acting and career coaching, there is a woman now in a Danish uh, cinema movie that she is Norwegian. Mm -hmm. Norwegian and Danish might be a little closer, but there's still different languages, different countries. And she plays in a Danish movie, the the lead. So this is really a motivation for everyone to also go for the countries where we were not born in and go yes. for not our only our mother tongues. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Have you considered to learn Spanish? Because you know how big we are in Latin America? Oh, I know. And I want to, yes. And I took in, in university, you know, I studied. I had like a another life before acting. So I studied. I took the A1 and A2 Spanish, but it's so long ago and I never managed to to speak it, but it's on but on my list. It's, you want to hear what's on my list? So first, now I have to learn Danish, of course, mm -hmm. because I live here and want to also really come in the film market. But then Spanish, mm -hmm. then Italian, mm -hmm. a perfect French. So I would really also want to work on my French so it becomes really perfect. And um, the other thing would be Portuguese would be would to be um and then I'm then I'm so happy. But if I if I ever could, then there's Arabic that I really want to learn, Turkish. It's it's crazy. I love languages. I love because I love traveling also. Yes, yes, yes. I, I know just, just the basics in Arabic and um and Turkey, Turkish, because I used to have a uh classmates and friends from Lebanon, from Egypt, and also from Turkey. Actually, I I I enrolled I in a study abroad, from, yes. Yeah, I had a roommate from Lebanon also, and um, one from Iran. And I can say, Teshrabs chai bidun sukhe. It means like, I drink, I drink tea without sugar. Yes, and I, <laughs> yes, and I took two, two years of Russian, but I lost the practice, and uh, but I could be able to pick it up to just a build a conversation. That's TJ, Mia Sabor, Angela. So just hello, my, my name is Angela. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And only these little things. I mean, even if you would talk to a caster or something and you know they are Russian or they're from Spain and you can just say the basics, you know, just hello yeah. in your name. Yes, like exactly. Yes, and they yes. Will be so comforted and really feel like you see them, which is also a nice thing to do. Exactly, exactly. And one of the languages um, I, I would like to study also is uh, Chinese, um, because sure. you know how expanding wow. now. And yes, and uh, and and I have a, a lot of friends from China, and, and I say I tell them I need to take the opportunity. You guys are here, and then I can practice because if you don't practice, it's more difficult to pick up a new, new language. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and Arabic and Chinese and. And also Russian, I have a lot of respect because they have like different writings and exactly and a lot mm -hmm. of that's, Exactly. That's what I did in Russian. I just learned the under the, the, the hearing and speak, but uh but not the writing because the alphabet is totally different from what we have. And my back in the day, my Russian teacher told me just just concentrate just uh the uh, to speak and hear it, to understand, and that's it. Don't don't focus too much on writing because it, it's very challenging. <laughs> yes, it's true. Yeah, it's like another it's another universe. Yeah, but it's actually so interesting we're talking about it and also about learning because I think you know I was always like a woman and a girl with a lot of dreams. Yeah, yes. and a lot of wishes, all the things I want to do. But when I actually learned one thing, and that is that you can't do everything at least not mm -hmm. at the same time exactly that would be helpful and to understand well i speak german it's my mother tongue i speak english like fluently uh, i speak french these are the things i'm focusing on for now mm -hmm. and that i do and then i can get better and now i'm, I'm learning a new language danish but also because i live here but then i stick to that yes, until yes, that yes. works and then i establish a new goal and still, mm -hmm. I can have many like small goals on the way, you know, but really like I was overflowing with all those wishes and dreams. And I think this nice, nice thing about getting older, because you really understand, OK, it's better to focus on these like five, six things. That's how much yes, my brain exactly. is at the same time. Big goals in front of me. And then from there, I continue. 
that's what I, I agree a hundred percent where you say sometimes we can start. Yeah. It's normally start with a small goals, a step by step, a step by step, move forward to be able to reach the biggest goals. You know, it's like a, 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 the mistake that we, we normally do um, in general is create super big goals, but you need to, you need to claim, you know, a step one, a step two, starting with the small goals, you know, yeah. Yes, to, be, to have a realistic, you know, objectives, exactly. Commitment, exactly, exactly. And, and I just like to take examples from the from my coaching, you know, when my clients come here and they say like, I have studied acting or I want to become an actor, it doesn't matter. Then we first look at all their projects in their life. Mm -hmm. And then we actually, understand, okay, you have quite a lot on the plate already. So how can we make space for acting? Because like, if like this wall behind me, you got to make space you know yes like it's an empty wall so i can hang something but if it's full of stuff i can't ha hang anything anymore so exactly that, that's, so, that's so important and also always like you know we can you can also look at it schedule wise when exactly. i have my schedule i always try to keep a lot of free time because i could always be booked for a commercial or mm -hmm. for a film so it's good to you can still like reschedule everything but also to be flexible and for now it really always helped me to be yes. like, okay, I keep these dates free, something could happen. And if not, it's also nice to have a free day huh? from time to it's, time. Uh, exactly. No, it's, it's the time management. It's to build time, yeah. time management skills. Like, uh, for example, in my case, but I have my full-time job, but thanks, thanks God, I work Monday to Fridays, uh, 8 to 5, and, and I can be able to say, okay, I just full concentrate on weekends with podcasts and things like that, and also additional projects, but it's how to we manage our stress and manage and, and time management. That's the, is a key, like a, that's to be, how I to think, organize. I think honestly, it makes like um, a huge part of a good actor because we are all our own manager also in many ways. And we mm -hmm. are even our own lawyer and we are our, you know, our, we are the brand, but we also need to like push the brand so yes, exactly. There's so, there's so many things you, you can't believe. That's all about organizing in the actor's job. If you really want to make it work, or you can also call it differently. It's just a framing. You know, can also say like committed work, hard work that you put in every day, and treat it. And I think that's interesting. Like looking at the actors that also maybe someone that's listening now and says like, okay, why is it not working? Why I'm not not even getting self tapes or not hitting jobs? You gotta make time for acting. You got to treat it like it's a real profession, like the job we're going to every day. Mm -hmm. And that's how you have to treat it. And if you do it only on the weekends, that's also okay. But then on the weekends, you treat it like a real job and you show up for it and mm -hmm. you do your homework and stuff like mm -hmm. that, you know? Yeah. Yes, yes. And thank you, Lisa, for bringing that in this uh, interview because I don't want to call it interview, it's a chat. We're having a chat because I'm pretty sure that um, for those people who wants to be in the in, in the acting business, they are gonna take in consideration because you're living that dream. You're living the challenges. Like you say, okay, this is what you're doing, and it's working for you because I can see in your in your um in your uh, trajectory. You, for example, just at the end of last year, at the beginning of this year, you're you have projects in your table. You're moving forward. And it's not I'm easy going, because it's going yes. crazy. <laughs> yes. nah, it's, going, it's going crazy. It's going really, really good. But I'm, I'm like committedly working on it. And I can tell you that like you gotta promote yourself. You gotta yes. put yourself out there and promote your work and promote. I mean, the first thing because everything is happening online or a lot of things. If you put some pictures, also promoting yourself, putting yourself out there means like sometimes going to film festivals, you know, meeting people, like real life, saying hello, having a chat. This is it because in the end, we're also, it helped me a lot when I understood for acting, for example, I'm making connections. And the mm -hmm. nice thing would be if these connections would just stay for my whole life because then I have a huge network of people that could offer me jobs from different time to times. And if there's one person that can offer me a job, let's say a TV commercial once a year, mm -hmm. that's amazing. So exactly. I want to do a really, really good job. So they book me again. 
-hmm. So, and to do that on many layers and on, with all the different companies, I've booked two commercials in Denmark um, for uh, in this week. This week, congratulations! Thank you. I'm in the shortlisted, and also commercials are amazing. You you practice acting. They're mostly like you know the guy um, that's doing the commercial told me all about the concept. And mm -hmm. it's incredible how much time people put into it in the concept. He told me, yeah, your character will act like this. He will do that. And I was also like, wow, that's beautiful because it's a commercial. But I have to tell you one thing. All the phone calls I had for commercials um, were like that. They tell me about the role, about the character, because they really thought it through. They have a mood board, everything. So it's also an amazing job to do a commercial. So don't think that's not a good starting place, for example. And um, people start to see you also. Exactly. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Like uh, we said a bit, um, earlier, we need to sometimes we need to also have a, a short term of uh, goals to be able to reach the, lo the long term goals. Sometimes small steps can transform your life completely or take you to a, yeah. another direction with a lot of success. Yes. Yeah. And Yeah. And every every opportunity, any network event, any exposure. Um, I'm speaking about more than and when the acting field, you never know who is watching you, who's li who's listening to you, and that can be a yeah. big door for a big opportunity. Yes, exactly. That's so good that you mentioned that. And also, look, once you, I find now I'm saying that I'm be, I'm 31. If you find yourself and you find the things that you really want to do, then you always have something to talk about mm -hmm. because you have your passion projects. For me, it's my movies, you know, in my free time, I'm producing movies and we're going to have a premiere in cinema and, and Oslo, it's a private screening. Um, Is that, don't gonna, shed a tear. Don't shed a don't tear. Don't shed a tear, it's going to be in Berlin. Yes. And then Kurat is going to be in Oslo and the two private screenings happening. And you know, I just realized I'm going to call um, everyone that I want to see there, like the biggest production companies, mm -hmm. because I have something to say. I have something. I have an amazing movie. It's a high class thing. So I don't have to be shameful for anything. So I just exactly. called them, invited them. And they said, yes, we're going to come. So now we have an invite list. You cannot imagine like the people coming like to me, to my hour, You know, my team screening. This is incredible. Yes. But you don't know what it took me to take the phone, you know, and to be like, you know how the conversation started was like, I was like, hi, I'm Lisa Wiesner. And they were like, what? Who are you? And I was just like, keep it calm, woman. You've got this. And then I said, like, I'm the producer of Hurrah for Nordica, right? My movie. And I would love to invite you to a premiere. And, you know, they ended up, we talked for five minutes or something, and they ended up saying, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you so much. And I said, sure, of course. See you soon. So the, 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 the conversation started with, who are you? What? And I even sometimes ask, you know, do you have a, do you have a second? You know, it's nice to ask. So this is, you can see how it goes and just trust yourself, the things you want to do, tell people about it. Don't be afraid about rejections. I just talked to a younger actress. She came to me and said, like, you know, what should I do? I get rejected so much. I was on an HBO casting and it was the last, last round. And I said, like, you didn't get rejected. Mm -hmm. It's not true. And rejection is also like, what is this word? No, you got in until the final and then they found someone who just fits a little better. And exactly. It could be Could be age-wise, could be connected to the other characters. Could mm -hmm. also be, you know, that okay, we have three blonde people. If we take her and we have four, that's too much. And they already confirmed that can be such small things. Oh, she lives in uh she lives in Estonia, she doesn't live in Germany where we will shoot. Okay, we take the other one. It can be so many reasons. Can be, so, yes, 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 but uh, sometimes the first the automatic the uh, automatic response and 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 people's mm -hmm. minds including anyone myself as when i say in general is like uh it's because i'm not good enough it's me it's me and me the problem is me it's me, me you know but this like uh, those things like uh 
It's not necessary because they are not good or bad actors or they are not beautiful or not beautiful. It doesn't matter. It's just little no, things it's, like to make it more convenient for the producers, like you said. Yes. And, and, that's distance. Saying, and that's why I'm saying, um, I'm just, I just have to say that um, know what you can offer. Because mm -hmm. we actually found out with this younger actress that she is going a little bit too low with the playing age. Because she's in, in her 20s and she was like auditioning for roles in, you know, 17. And what we have to know as actors, for example, between 17 and 24, there's happening a lot in a human life. Mm -hmm. And the spirit, the energy a human has is very different. So even if you look very young and you're 24, you can definitely not apply for a role 17 because they have a totally different energy. It's exactly. not about the look, even if you look young. It's this energy of either revelation and puberty and all these things that we cannot copy and we exactly. cannot act these things. And of course, when we're looking at theater, it would be totally different. I can, I can play a child. Everyone knows I'm a woman. I'm an actress doing that right now, you know, because you cannot, like, that's a different topic. But for movies, TV series, things like that, and that's why I say, like, know the things you can offer from playing age, like, also be be honest, you know, and be like, and always compare to real life. I mean, I cannot yes. play someone who's, who's 50, because mm -hmm. I, I lack the life experience, and you can see that in my face, but you can also feel it in my energy. I still have this very dynamic, you know, energy. I want to achieve my goals, and a, and a woman in her 50s, you know, the hormones stop, and to, to go so fast and everything, the period stops, it's a totally different energy. Exactly, acting, exactly. Even with acting, when we go for film and TV, and I'm talking right really precisely about that, we cannot act that. Yes, yes, I agree with you. No, yes, and, and, and it, it is very good that you bring in that and mention those things because I'm pretty sure that, um, there are many people that are not considering that. And the first thing that we... Like I said, the automatic response is, I'm not good, they don't like me, all negativity. But in reality, like you said, there's a lot of, um, how can I say, there's a lot of um, reasons behind they are rejecting. But, but sometimes rejection, it, it, rejection can be a positive thing, yes. Yes, and I think the, the thing for this one was just also for her to, re because then they saw her, you know, she had a recall and everything, they saw her and to understand, okay, um, maybe I'm a little, I have to change my playing edge a bit and, and apply for a little different roles. Mm -hmm. And then I might get it because when they see me on the picture, I look really young, but when they see me, they will be like, oh, okay, this, this doesn't work, you know? Exactly. 17. It's just the slight, slight things. And we can like, we could roll in this carousel, let's say for the rest of our life and be like, oh yeah, but I want to apply first, like for this younger role. So that no, you cannot play them just just let it go but there are enough of the other you know playing ages that you actually ref like um, that you can do and you know now i'm casting for my new movie because i have a new project that i also awesome. want to talk to you about it's it's a rock band film that's going to play in the 70s it's i mm -hmm. think this is my biggest project also you know from the whole creative side to, to create a rock movie so it's mm -hmm. about rock music i need i need actors professional actors who are also professional musicians because they should play a real band and they mm -hmm. will have to play songs with each other so and then we put it in the 70s so there will be a lot of set design costumes makeup we need to do you know here in the 70s look in the 70s but i love it it's just we're now in a pre-production this is just so lovely fantastic but so you you, you have the band the, i'm sorry for interruption do you, you have the band already or you're still doing the casting looking for the band i'm missing i'm missing two people so if anyone out there, it's like okay, a, anyone just take a note. Professional then. actor and <laughs> musician, yes, yes, or super dedicated musician. I can also imagine that because they have the mindset, professional mm -hmm. musician, even if they don't have so much acting experience. But I want to tell you something now, Angela. It's like crazy, and that is, I get, I have a casting team with my casting assistants, and the, the actors come and they say like, yeah, yeah, I can play the instruments. And we, call, we, um, we tell them everything. We tell them, look, this is going to be professional rock band. You have to be able to play in a band, improvise on that level. And it's rock music. So it's not like soft pop or something. It's rock music. So 
if you can put the guitar behind your shoulders, we're talking, you know, and you mm -hmm. can play there. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So what happens is I get a lot of videos from people that tell me they can play. And what I see, I don't even want to tell you, it's so bad. Mm -hmm. And then I get one thing and it comes back to what I said. Please, actors, stick to what you can do. Don't tell me you speak Spanish if you can't say more than, hey, my name is. I don't mm -hmm. want to know that because the casters and the production put so much time and effort in finding people, watching all your videos. They would never cast you because you don't have the skills and you are wasting their precious time. So let's do both of us a favor and just say, I'm going to do apply for the things that I can actually do. So I'm going to get the job and the casters and the producers of the production get like they, they um, save a lot of time. Yes. You know? And this one is going to be a feature have, film. It's going to be a scissor reel. So it's going to be like around 30, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we're going to make a feature out of it later because Fantastic. for now I'm only producing. Yeah. I'm only producing like around half an hour films to give an impression and then we're mm -hmm. pitching them to corporate to co-producers and stuff and see what we can do out of it if they want to do a tv series or a film and also just to give them you know a thing when you're pitching now we're, we're switching topics but if we're pitching so if i'm a producer or i'm an actress and i want to do a movie um i have to consider that i'm presenting an idea and i just lately was asked if i want to be producer in another movie and he said everything, we have some sponsors, we have this and that. And I said, like, but show me the aesthetics of the film, you know, show me what's going to happen. And the only thing he could show me was a few pictures. And I was like, that, that's not going to work. I need to see the actors, how they play. I need to see the emotions. I need to see the visuals. What kind of colors will you use? So you actually have to produce this thing, even if it's just going to be five minutes. Mm -hmm. But I need to see something. And exactly. also all the other people that will, will invest, filmmaking is very expensive. So if someone will invest, let's say, 500,000 euros or dollars or pounds into your movie, well, they want to see what they're up to. Huh? Mm -hmm. They want to see the acting. They want to see the impact, the story on, on a screen, what's really happening. So and I think it comes back to something that I realized, and that is that um, – you don't put enough effort in the thing that you want. Mm -hmm. So my question would be to you, as for example, if I would be a producer, do I want to be in a project? Do you really want to do that project? Because if you want to do that project and present it to me like wholeheartedly and present me something whole, as far as you can go, but to create a website and to put some pictures on it, you know, that's not effort. Everyone yes, can yes. do that. Exactly. But to get a crew of 30 people for five days to shoot this thing costs maybe 30,000 euros. Maybe I don't have them myself. That's how I do it. You know, I don't have that money. But I get it together from other people, sponsors. We do that movie. And then I have this finished thing. And then I have also, of course, the script. And I have the pitch and everything. And then you go. Exactly. And then the only thing, the only thing that's missing is the yes from the producers. Yes. And I see and, the mm -hmm. same just to finish that, I see the same with the actors. So I asked the actors, for example, that want to be casted for the film. I asked them, can you send me a video of you playing electric guitar? Because they say they can do it. Um, and they say, no, I don't have time. I'm in between projects. And I'm like, if you don't even have time to find an electric guitar, to rent it in a store, to ask friends, to put a Facebook post in a music group and say like, hey, can I come to your place and record one song? I need it for a self tape Then you don't have the energy to be in my movie. Because they're because not interested. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's for me, lack of interest. And I'm putting half a year of prep into this, into this movie. So I'm not going to, I'm never going to work. And I would never work with this actor again. Because yes. I can see the attitude and they can come to me in 10 years and say they've changed. But then I say like, show it to me, bring it on yes. the material. You know? Yes, and exactly. That's the difference be between people who really think make things happen and they have a real interest mm -hmm. and people who are kind of like um, swimming around and want things, but they're also like to like probably maybe complain about things or um, yeah, just say like, I don't get jobs. And that's the difference. 
And I even yes. posted on my wall a story where a guy, I think he lives in London, a homeless actor just posted in my story, found it so amazing. This initiative booked a flight to, to New York. I don't know how he afforded it. Put a thousand posters of his headshot, actor looking for agency. Went back to the UK, put thousand pictures on, um, you know, everywhere on the street, actor look, looking for agent. And now he got an agent and he's homeless. And that's initiative for me. That's exactly. like, that's someone I would book straight away if they fit the profile. Because I know you would do everything for that movie. Same as me, the producer. Yes. I'm also doing everything for that movie. So now we're, we're talking. Now we're on, on one page. And that's like, that's people that I'm looking up to and that I admire, you know? Oh, yes. Yes, likewise. And I have a quote. It's in Spanish, but I want to translate in English. Yes. Um, it's easy. Uh, it's, very, it's, it's like a, you, you can tell when someone has interest. But it's more obvious to notice when people, when someone have no interest. Like I say, like a, it's easy to see. It's, uh, you can notice when someone have an interest to do something. But when someone have no interest at all, it's more obvious to notice that. Yeah. It's more visible. In other words, when people yeah. don't have an interest in something, it's more, make more noise. They can show quickly. They can easy to notice yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. I love this quote. I love it. I get like juice bumps. It's really, yeah. And it's something that's like, um, now that I'm also producing this movie, it's something I've been thinking about in all this process, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, and then I'm thinking about the people that are kind of hiding, having these talents. So I'm thinking about all the actors or actors to be musicians and people that can play crazy. Like I have some friends that can play instruments crazy good. And the, they just don't do anything with it. Exactly. And I'm like, man, you should go out there, have a concert, go to an open stage, do something with it because you're amazingly talented and you've put a lot of work into this. And I can see that. I can mm -hmm. hear that. And you deserve every success coming to you, you know? Exactly. And this film is going to be in English or German? Or it's going to be in English, yeah. English, okay. Yeah. I'm going to see, I'm going to... Um, I'm I'm going to share your information to one of them, to my I have a musician contacts to yeah. see if they interested. So let's see. We'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, it will be so fun. Yeah. We're just pre-producing now, but we're hoping it's gonna be an incredible thing. We have an amazing team, DOP, Andrew. He's done a lot of things. We have a set designer Miriam, she's done TV series, films, then we have Louisa Nissen, she won awards in America and also in Denmark for costume design. We have Great people that are all, all willing to help. Do you have a specific like, age you're yeah, looking for? Any specific age? Yeah, it's like a young rock band. So I'm looking from anything like 18 to let's say 30. But I'm I'm not flexible because um of course I need the instrument skills and the energy needs to fit, you know, this energy of like someone who has the spirit to strive. I see. Yeah, I see. Let me see how I can find on my list <laughs> at that age awesome and go, getting back to your uh don't share a tear and the private screening i was reading the the story behind is very touching about your father he was if i don't make a mistake he suffered from bipolar and your story was yeah was uh focused on in that story and also your grandpa grandfather he had he went to the war and can you tell us what is behind this story? Yes, of course. So nice you're asking. So there's Don't Shed a Tear that I shot in, in, in Copenhagen. It was the last one I did. And this is about a painter. And there, it's actually interesting. So we're only female producers. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're, uh, we wanted to talk about male depression. Okay. So we wanted to talk about men that suffer from depression. Because mm -hmm. I also have friends that do. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and we all, you know, there's this one video of this, like, I think it's a Scottish boxer or Irish boxer that says like, hey, I'm showing up today after he won, won the fight. And he says like, but actually I have to tell you, my friend just, just um, gone suicidal and because he didn't talk to someone about it and I didn't know that he was suffering. And then he said to every man out there and every boy, talk if you have something. And it touched me so much that I did this movie 
because it's so true. And I see it, of course, also part wise was in my father, you know, with his background. He was bipolar. So that's like depression and yes. manic face. Mm -hmm. But I see that men have a hard time talking. I mean, I see it also with my friends around. So this film was really addressing what happens because this guy actually goes down the road. You know, he buys the house. He marries the woman. He has it all what you should have. He has a good career, but he's not happy. And he's actually suffering because he has so much to do and so much to live up to that he can basically not live. He cannot let go, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think many men struggling with, in my experience, what, just from what I see and what I'm when I talk to my friends, my male friends. Yes. So this mm -hmm. film is all about that. And then there's Hura von Norge. And this one is about... Uh, Fine, who has a bipolar father. So it's a little bit of my, my backstory in there. And um, he's drinking also, uh, the father. So it's a, and he was an ex MMA star, you know, so someone who was really like working hard so once, but now he like lost kind of, he kind of lost himself and also gave up on himself. And it's so hard for the daughter that I play for Fine to see that she is, and she's still admiring him in a way. So she also starts to do martial arts, um, but she kind of rejects him also and, and finds in her teacher, Eric, she finds like a real male, healthy, um, you know, someone to look up to and someone who can teach her so that she can actually at some point, and we're not even touching this in the, in the scissor reel, that she can help her father, you mm -hmm. know, because this is what you want, because also, we have to acknowledge that these, like depression or bipolar is mm -hmm. an illness. And people are ill and they're suffering. Mm -hmm. So you cannot expect them to do what you can expect of someone who's healthy. Exactly. Also not this. Mm -hmm. the role of the father, you know, you cannot mm -hmm. expect them. It was also really nice in my personal story to understand that I cannot expect from my father all the things that someone can expect from their healthy father. So exactly. it's nice if you can find people that can give you what you need because you do need certain things, you know, like acknowledgement. I, I also did like personally like, right. And I still do a lot of martial arts. So I find this like, I find this uh, male energy and then the male trainers that give me this, you know, like, Oh, Lisa, I see you, you're doing good, you know, and this kind of thing. I get it there. And with my acting teachers, like this um, committed, committed conscious, like, holding you in your process mm -hmm. you know so you can grow which maybe was lacking often in, in my childhood but you know I'm just one of many because if we look around if you ask people like how was your father like man you have no clue and I heard all sorts of stories and they are all kind of heartbreaking like not not all of them of course you know mm -hmm. but um, many struggled with a father who was maybe not there so much. Then I talked to someone, she has a super religious father, it was really, really hard to grow up with. So many different stories. And I love stories. And that's why I like fell in love so much with filmmaking, you know? And then just, yeah, I think this whole story from my father, of course he got bi bipolar because his father went to war when he was 15, came back, was totally traumatized, traumatized my father who was a baby and a child back then, mm -hmm. right? traumatized the whole family with his unresolved trauma and all I mean he killed people he ate things from the wood of my grandpa right to survive he got um shot in the legs whatever he was a slave for the Polish people I think for like several months before the, the war ended so he went through it all and he couldn't process it and everything so I think it's nice if we as privileged people, you know, I'm sitting here on my couch talking to you. You sit here, we can do a podcast. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, it's amazing. It's just like, um, there's a lot of gratefulness there. And then we can actually, and that's a good thing. Don't, don't feel bad for this, right? But we can actually sit down and tell the stories. Mm -hmm. Because we have the sitting bones on the ground now. We get food. We live in countries where we, even if we don't have a job, we get like, you know, unemployment benefits it's just like a, it's a good life you know exactly. like most of us of course not not everyone there's still many people suffering but I'm talking about like mm -hmm. countries like UK and Germany and Denmark where we live which doesn't mean you know I don't want to even 
even say how it is in other countries or what's happening in Ukraine right now. But we have the time. I have the time to sit down and talk, tell these stories because they need to be told. Yes, and, and also as, as, yes to educate people to understand in reality what uh, bipolar people are suffering because there's a lot of lots of lack of understanding. And yes. in films, in those type of films that you're making is very it's educational. I call it. educational to to teach others to build empathy. But before to build the empathy to understand what is it's a it's a disease it's an illness it's, they don't make those things because they want they want to this because it's out of their yeah. hands mm -hmm. exactly and like i really love what you said because it's so nice yeah you can like what i'm really trying with my films and i think i'm succeeding is that i'm giving an inside view into what happens so that you still have a lot of compassion for the characters mm -hmm. a lot You love the father of Fina, you know, the bipolar one who's drinking. You love this guy. You just like from the first moment, you know, it starts like the first scene is in the car and he brings her to the martial arts studio. But, you know, he doesn't bring her like a normal dude. And the scene is actually out of my life. So my father was always driving me everywhere, you know. But the way he's driving, he's putting on the gas and like, ah! you know, like, <laughs> okay, girl, you're there. And she's like, fuck, I survived the trip, you know, like I'm still whole, I'm still alive because he yes. maybe like drove over some red lights and drove way too fast. And you're just like, what the fuck, you know? So sorry for the language. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the first scene of the film. It's kind of what happened with my, with my father every day, you know, when I was mm -hmm. a child. And so I'm happy that I'm still still alive. And, and, you know, but to put it in the film and to see like, man, this guy is so sweet. And then he says like, hey, Fina, I love you, you know, like mm -hmm. have a great day. And he's so sweet, but you're just like, man, dude, you can't drive like that. But you always forgive him also, like straight away. So exactly. <laughs> This is the beautiful thing. So you, when you also like work with characters and deep characters, you know, and um, when I write scripts, I really try to, you don't need so much words, but just choose the right words. So people really get where things are coming from, you know? Exactly. And you're raising funds to make this short film as a feature film? Um, we're not, yeah, we're pitching. That means mm -hmm. yes, we wanna we wanna get the funding, mm -hmm. but what we're what, what we're trying, what we really want is that we go get a co-production company, mm -hmm. so that we can produce it with our team because we love the actors and we love everything, right? Mm -hmm. We love the crew. We made everyone like perfectly fitting, so we would love to have a co-production company that's helping us to fund the film and also, of course, like steps in with distribution or with um, equipment and other things. And then we make it happen together, actually. That's because good. what I, you know, the, uh, there's many other ways. Like you can sell your idea, and then someone buys an idea. But I think I think that's so. That's just I don't want to do that. I I don't feel like that's a nice thing to do, to to sell your idea if you like, if you could do that, actually make it happen. You know, manifest it. Exactly. And there's a film that called to my attention. It's drama about friendship. Directed by Don Wall, and you did that well fine, and you also were part that's of that writer. The, that's the one who ran for Norgen. That's it. The one I told you about with the car, with the father, the bipolar. That's ah. it. And the subtitle is just like drama about friendship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the one the the shed the tears is also from from your father, bipolar. Uh, issue and this one is the also one is, don't you yes. hear is dep depression and depression the mm -hmm. suffering from but it's it's close right because bipolar is like just has also the other side yes, like the manic yes. one. but they, the films are very different also style wise visually mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. from the characters because he's really depressed and he also louis the character the painter mm -hmm. he's also suffering from hallucinations and like Because if you keep suppressing and suppressing, you have really dark thoughts and, you know, and um, we see on this in this other film, Ura von Orga, we, we actually see a man like um, Egil, Fina's mm -hmm. father, who is very extrovert. Because ah, that's, that's okay. many, many bipolar people are very extrovert. And also Don's, Don's father, the, the director, he's also bipolar. Mm -hmm. So we kind of met each other. 
and I was looking for a director and then she said it and we, I said like, yeah, hey, I think I found my director, you know, because yes. you understand, yes. you understand yes. this illness, you understand this personalities, this extrovert, very mm. kind of heartbroken man that I'm talking about. That's, but I also that's interesting. Just, because we talk so much about the men, I also mm-hmm. want to say that for Vodafone Orga, the layers also really much on the women because of course what he does has a big impact on the leading role, Fina, mm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So how does then the daughter deal with it or how does a woman deal with it in a male world where she's not really supported from the male side, from the father's side? How mm-hmm. do you grow up? How you do you develop? How do you still get what you need to feel like full, right? Mm-hmm. And to, to get your life rolling and to be happy also. I see. And also here with, you know, with the other film, with the painter, with Louis, there's of course like this woman he falls in love with that actually gives him the mirror of the life he could have mm-hmm. if he wouldn't have pulled up all this um, responsibilities he has to do. The house, the wife, the kids, the job. If he wouldn't do that, then he would do something totally else with this woman who's a free young woman. And, you know, a free spirit, a beautiful and very, like, um, open-hearted woman. And he, and they just have a love story, you know, in their mind. Because in reality, he doesn't dare to touch, to change anything, to speak honestly with his wife or anything, you know. He doesn't dare at all. And it's also, I actually, you know what, I really love this point about, about this film. How often don't we dare to talk about something that's really on our heart and we're really unhappy with. Like, can you please, I don't know, do not always go in with like uh, dirty shoes because this carpet is so important for me. It's for my mother and you're just Mm -hmm. stepping over it. And it's just a small thing, but it really hurts. Maybe your mother is dead and it's the only carpet you have. You know, it's just an example for a topic. But how often don't we talk about it because we're scared to lose someone? Exactly. But we're mm-hmm. also running. We are running from from our lives, from what mm-hmm. actually makes us happy. And that's that's something I like to tell because I even hope at some point that people get so touched that they say, I don't want this to happen with my life. You know? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because the characters are going through it. The characters go to the darkness. So you don't mm-hmm. have to go because you see what happens. You mm-hmm. see what happens. You stay in that relationship you're not happy with, mm-hmm. that you are suicidal, like Louis in the film, you know, and all these things, and that it's not a good thing. And maybe you don't, and that's a good thing about films because they touch you so much that maybe you just you just take a lot of lessons with you, but exactly. they touch you. It's not like a book, a book with a lot of rules or something, you know. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and this one also has a. Uh, private screening and also company fate film so that one is you have several for I did mm-hmm. it in Oslo with the mm-hmm. bipolar father and the martial arts the, the drama mm-hmm. friendship mm-hmm. that one is shown in Oslo because it's made in Oslo mm-hmm. this one with Louis is made in Copenhagen in Denmark so we're going to have a private screening now in Berlin because mm-hmm. part of the crew is from Berlin mm-hmm. then in Denmark and also in London, both of the films. Awesome. And for the Don't Yet Tears, I um, think uh, you mentioned in your post that Constantine Film, Arte TV channel, Netflix will be attending. Fantastic. Yeah. Woo. I told you. It's, it's just, it's just, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are over the moon about this. Um, we've put a lot of hard work in. And people seem to like what we do. So we're just super happy. We have a lot of special guest, guests. Um, Paula Riemann, her, mo- her mother, Katja Riemann, she's one of the most famous actresses in Germany, is coming. Um, we have a lot of special guests coming. I can just tell you. it's, And I'm, I'm having a very good feeling that this film will actually come to life and be seen. Will be. Actually, like, not only as a private screening, but really in cinema. Yeah, yes, so. yeah, it's, it, I, I like the your energy that you project and, and your and, and your, the passion that you project in your projects. And I'm pretty sure people will feel that. And 
and I'm looking forward to see uh to see your films and I'm I'm pretty sure that's gonna be in, in feature film and you're gonna be going up and up and up because that's your passion when we have a passion of something we can transform and um and real things in our hands so I'm pretty sure that oh yeah and, and the oh, and the yeah. most and the most beautiful thing I like about you you don't put excuses. You look always forward. Move forward. Move forward. That's the that's yeah, the, the constancy. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Martial arts boxing really helps me because you gotta face it. You gotta punch and you gotta punch a lot. And you have to have the condition for it. You have to have the straightforwardness to just punch because it also, you know, like when I started martial arts, I think seven years ago, mm -hmm. I didn't have that. So maybe a good thing to to work with if you want to work on like, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank, no, you, thank you, you. Thank you, you, uh, Lisa, Lisa, for allowing me to do this second interview. We have the first one in uh in, in YouTube yeah. channel. And looking forward to do more follow-ups about your coming projects, the development of these um premieres, after premieres, and all these things. Because I, I admire you and have a big respect of you. I love your passion and believe me a lot of things that you said in this chat i'm gonna take i'm gonna i'm going to apply in my life because you impact me a lot you're a very good coach also wow. those people they are Thank the first you. time learning about listen listener listen listener she's also mindfulness coach so you can find the information at the end of the video or in the description box if you're interested to you. get enrolled in one of her fantastic mindfulness uh courses or yes those that's 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 fantastic what can i say you put me i'm a specialist about you and <laughs> don't stop so I you you're you keep showing up with the podcast i mean this really deserves a lot of applause for you also. oh thank you so much you know, my friend sometimes we got to celebrate ourselves it's really important process on the way so yeah, I want to tell you, celebrate you for that. And you keep interviewing a lot of amazing guests. I just uh, saw you posted the, the last one, the last interview, ju just have a new podcast series on. I just want to watch it. I'm just looking forward to watch it. And I love our first interview and I got a lot of compliments about this one. So I'm so excited what you're editing out of this one now. Oh, thank you so much, Lisa. And uh, and don't forget that I'll, I'll play your, uh, your song that you uh, sent over to me and ready Luminae and please continue send me you have a beautiful voice you're a super multitask woman uh, you're very good example to follow actors producer writer you're you study communications you were a reporter you have that skill as well and mindfulness you speak three uh four you're going for the fourth language you know, fourth language and <laughs> what can i say you're wow. super and super beautiful beautiful woman inside and outside Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to meet my ladies because we're going to have like a ladies and um, an acting uh, ladies meet up. So I always do that from now on and I'm Fantastic. so looking forward. And All I'm right. going to tell them about this beautiful meeting. Fantastic. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lisa, for your support. And, you know, I'm a big fan of you and looking forward for more interviews in the near future. And thank you so much. So I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs>